I need to find myself out here. Two hundred kilometers should do the trick. Stay here. Very special. Very special place. Don't mind the dogs, we're just kind of hanging out inside for right now. We're about to jump into the video, but this video is sponsored by Bespoke Post and I have to give a huge shout out to them. Bespoke Post is a monthly subscription box delivering top shelf goods from under the radar brands. You pay $45 a month and you get about $70 worth of goods. And on top of that, it's free to join. So let's check out what I got in this month's Bespoke Post. So now you can preview your box before it's shipped. You'll get a box assigned to you at the start of each month based on your preferences. And before it's shipped, you'll get a preview of what's to come inside. And you'll be able to decide if you'd like to one, keep it, two, swap it for a different box, or three, skip the month entirely for no charge. You only pay for what you want. And you can also cancel your subscription at any time. First, we'll do the bare bones, the bare bones hatchet. This is from the split package. That seems like a hardwood handle, which is nice. It's got a Cordura axe mask, and uh, it's kind of sharp. It's sharper than ones I've got in the past. Short, and I bet you it throws pretty well. Next up, dagger fish with the fish kit. Let's see what this is all about. Yes, yes. You got a little pocket fish kit, I bet. Yeah, you put whatever in there. One second, beauty. Your reel is, your line is on here. This is your reel. Hooks, bobbers, the bottom is hollow too. Pretty slick. I am definitely gonna use this. I can see it now. Plus, certainly not least, we got the hunter kit, forge kit. Nice little gentleman's knife. Good little hand grooves, small enough. If you guys wanna get 20% off your first order, you can click the link in the description below and when it comes to the checkout, use code ROBINET20 and you'll get 20% off. This folk is hooking you guys up. There's plenty of different boxes. There's more available and there's ones that I'm looking forward to trying uh, in the future. Just tons of different ones. So thank you guys for watching this. Thanks Bespoke again. On to the video. It's the morning. My friends are back. Well, let's open the eye and see. Another gray day. I've decided to uh, just keep going and see what happens. Um, I don't know. I can't let this take me out. It's, uh, it's definitely bothering me. And I'm kind of concerned about infection if it doesn't get treated, to be honest with you. But I, uh, I don't want to bail because of an eye. It doesn't make sense. It's silly. So I'll see. I'll watch it and see. And uh, anyways, I gotta get a move on. I think I have a pretty big day today as well. Some big portages, like the biggest ones, like uh, two 1,000 meters, two 700 meters, and a couple 300s in between. There's nothing like what I've done so far. So uh, yeah, big day. Jerky and oatmeal for breakfast. So what I do at night, I put all my pots and pans together kind of stacked a little bit so if they get dinged around by an animal it'll scare it off a bit I got my Kevlar bags over there holding my food up this was my tent site so I'm sure it was a camp at some point but look at this not very hospitable I'm leaving this camp 
This is the most mosquitoes I've dealt with on this trip for sure at this camp and these no see which are absolutely the worst. Um, okay, it's raining and I've got decent paddling and portaging to do. It's a good day to move. It's not too hot, so I'm taking that as a plus. Get on the water with my friends, mosquitoes! The big camera is packed away today due to the rain. Due to the rain. I can't tell if you can see the mosquitoes because all the water drops. Anyways, goodbye worst camp of the trip. Hello floss stick. This seems like an all day type of rain. Builds character. Bruce, the outfitter, told me he recommended not coming this way. He said that uh, the portages are much rougher, less used all around, uh, and I'm noticing that. But uh, I don't shy away from a little challenge, old Joe. only 300 and that killed me I have a 700 I have two 700s and two thousands possibly today <laughs> I don't know about that ah I just feel nuts ah. Super pretty in here. This hat looks goofy. It's more than sprinkling now. It's an all out shower. Guys, it's just not caribou. Man, it's too far to get the, the GoPro, and like I'm not even 100% sure it was a caribou, caribou or moose. But I can tell you this: its tail was white, like a white tail here. Oh, there he's going! Oh, I swear it's a caribou. Oh, it's a white tail. Oh, it's There's a caribou in the water. Caribou, woodland caribou and wabakimi, boy, two of them today. That's 100% exactly the same thing I saw over there. Man, that's awesome. That is awesome. Whew. Down the river, um, there's an old radio station. And I'm curious to see what it is. This is so odd to see out here in the middle of nowhere. This looks like it's more than a radio. Back. See a little cabin. We'll be respectful. Hello. Probably it's probably locked anyways. <laughs> oh, something scurried. Something scurried. Something scurried away. Oh, it's a rat. What is that? What was that? Huh. In a little lodge. Get 
from here? That rat, it might have been a rat with his first stuff out. <laughs> okay. Well, obviously from that sign, someone's been here in the past couple of years. I'm going to uh, I'm going to sit down and have a drink of water, look at my map, and have some food before I head on. <laughs> what do you think the chances are? Ah! No way! What? It's got to be solar. We'll leave that off. We don't need it. That's crazy. Too cool. Too cool. Freaking lights in here. Hmm. Pretty slick, man. Nice size, too. There's a bathroom. So, I believe this is Bruce's neighbor who also had a business, but he passed last year, if I'm not mistaken. So, anyways. Let's see where I am, where I can get today. Because at this side of the, the park where I am, it doesn't look like there's much rock outcroppings for camps. Or campsites alone, there that there's not, but like the shoreline just it doesn't lend itself to camping. So I gotta really look and see where I can get today and, and what I can do. Oh, well, that was a pretty cool spot. There's uh, some birch bark on the wall with some writing on it. Seems like a lot of Americans, excuse me, used to go there and hunt moose and fish and have weekends and all sorts of stuff. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, it's a shame if that dude did pass away. I hope that the tradition can continue. And not only that, I hope that the people from the States can come back to our country soon. And vice versa. Who knows? By the time I get out of here, maybe that will have happened. We'll see, eh, Kyle? Maybe we'll be able to be friends again someday. <laughs> Anyways, sky is clearing up a little bit in some spots. So that's a good sign. I've decided that I don't think I'm going to get as far today as I had originally thought. It's only noon, but there is a whole lot of big portaging, and I have the time. So uh, I'm probably going to do another big portage, a thousand meter, and then there should be a good, decent campsite after that with spot for two tents, my map says. So we are balling out of control today, boys and girls. This one feels a little bit more substantial. My only problem is I'm battling a headwind and every time I catch a fish, it's pushing me back. Woo! The, the wind is pushing me back the way I came quite a bit. <laughs> it's a grass carp. What are you doing? You got a little grass in your mouth there, bud. A little snap racket. Why all the grass? Start paddling again so that I can make up the ground I lost <laughs> catching that fish. Maybe it's not worth it. Maybe it's not worth it. Turn around, Joe. Turn around. Back the way you came. I'm going against the current and against the wind now. For the rest of my trip, it's against the current at least. I don't know about the rain or the wind, sorry, but the current for sure. Again, 
Bruce told me not to come this way. He told me not to, but I saw the Northern Scavenger boys came out this way and I was like, that looks like a good way to come out. A little bit of speck fishing. With the rain, uh, at the very end, there's some brook trout, which are not common here. So they caught a couple out the, their last day and I was like, that's a good way to end. I'd like to do that too. But we'll see if it's worth it. <laughs> the other way was very scenic that he mentioned to come out and stuff and not as marshy and rivery and not against the current. But that's okay. I will definitely be coming back to this place. But you know what? I wouldn't have saw those caribou if I didn't come this way. And there's some pictographs in a day or two this way that I'd like to see that I wouldn't have been able to see otherwise. So those were my other reasons. Well, my other reasons were pictographs. The caribou was just a bonus. I think this is the spot where those boys are pulling out some big, big bite too. I could be wrong. I think so. Some decent contours in front of us. And that's the way I'm going to my portage. So I'm hoping it's in the valley in, the, in between those two contours. And the terrain has changed so much from the start of the trip. Remember those portages I was doing day one and two? How they were all exposed in the sun and old burn and uh, conifer forests. And now I'm in this deciduous conifer mix portage where it couldn't be thicker. Big change. And also there's more contours over on this side. More birch I've seen. Some ash, which is crazy. This is the east side of the park here. Oh, this is the longest thousand meters I've ever walked in my life. Oh my goodness. This is such a relief to get to this side. Such a relief. Oh, oh man. I'm done portaging for today. That's for sure. A thousand meters my ass. Oh, how nice. Um, it's not my last portage. So, that's something. I have a 3, 325 right now. Right, right now. I'm just gonna find it. And then, and then, I'm done portaging and I'm almost at the campsite. Okay, one more port dive. One more 325 port dive. I did not want to do this last portage, but check this out. This is my sight. As soon as I come to the end of it, I've seen nothing like this the whole time yet. Ugh. Nice vertical cliffs. Some big rocks jutting out. Not too typical of this place. It's hot, man. The weather changed like crazy. I need to go for a swim when I get to camp. Yep. Oh, that wind needs to stop, man. Very pretty. Camp will be not too far that way. Man, this wind is nuts. Absolutely ridiculous. It's hard to gain any ground. It's coming right at me. You got a headwind going south. It's so weird. Like I picked this this direction of a route so I wouldn't have to go against the wind. Ah! I got so little to go on the map, but it seems so damn far right now. I'm shot. My arms are shot. I'm beat. I'm hungry. Ah! This wind is relentless. Almost at camp. I'm gonna eat food. I'm gonna relax. I'll lay in my hammock. Read my book, journal. I'm really looking forward to it actually. Really looking forward to it. It's four o'clock, quarter to four. By the time I get there, it'll be four, quarter after. Whew. Big day. Not as big as yesterday, but a big day. First four days were beauty and pretty easy. Day five, 
six, seven, or five and six were a rest day. Seven was brutal. Eight is brutal. And we'll see what else. Oh my God, I can't even move. Hey folks. Well, I got to camp. I know I said I was gonna go swimming when I did, but everything has changed. It's a tiny little nothing camp and there is some absolutely crazy clouds coming in. Check this out. The bugs are just next level right here. But look at that sky. Like, uh, and I'm exposed. I'm as exposed as you can be on this little rock. Man, that's some rough looking sky right there. That's gonna come down pretty hard, I imagine. Oh yeah, yeah. Anyways, this is my camp, the extent of it. I've got my tarp up over top of my tent, as you can see, just for extra extra protection. The wind was whipping in from that way like crazy. So there was no flies then, and uh, but the, the thing was blowing away. So anyways, I feel very exposed, but with that tarp, it's a little bit better. I gotta clean my stuff up here before this comes down. Oh, she dark. Now the wind is coming from this way. It switched directions completely. Oh my goodness. I was paddling that way all day long and it was blowing so darn hard. It literally switched, completely switched directions. I thought it was weird that I was getting a south wind. I'm traveling south, I'm getting a headwind. This is not, if this doesn't come down, I will be very surprised. No, yeah, I can see it. See it on those top trees there coming down already. Well, do it. Storm on me. Bring it on. Please and thank you. Let's get it on, get it over with. Ask and you shall receive. I gotta shut this before too many more black flies come in here. Uh, look at them all. Die. You're not my friends. You're not my friend. I made it here just in time. I hope this blows over or whatever, whatever it does. It doesn't sound like it's gonna go for a long time. Rain's hard and then the wind stops coming in my face. I hate it when wind comes in my face. So something happened to my uh, air mattress yesterday. Ever since I left Wendell Beckwith's cabin, everything's been going wrong. Um, I forgot the, the, the fishing rods there, my eye, and the sleeping pad. But there's something else too, but there's a big hole or big abrasion in the middle of my sleeping pad right now. I've had this pad for years and it's been fine. I've always packed it the way I've packed it. I'm doing the, everything the same, but when I left there, the next day after I left there, the next camp, I opened it and I lost a bunch of air. I looked and it's right, right in the crease. So what I think happened was there was some sand inside the sleeping pad when I, when I folded it up, maybe even as I was folding, it got sand in it and it all went in the crease and abraded itself while I was walking, uh, portaging and in the canoe. So anyways, it's just a slow leak and I have mended it, but last night I had to fix it. I had to blow it back up three, three or four times. Um, so anyways, long story short, when I got on the way here, I thought, well, that's all right. I'll just use my hammock for the rest of the trip. There's no trees to hang my hammock here at all. They're all very, very thin, young trees and they're back in there, a mess of uh, alders and everything. It's not a place for a hammock at all. But I'm really happy I brought the hammock as well because like, if I had to just pull over or whatever and bust my way into the woods, I wouldn't be able to find a flat spot for a tent at all. And I have been relaxing and it. it's a kind of a cool combination, a small hammock with this tent it's not that big it's not that much weight it's not that big i don't know how many more times i will do it in future trips but i'm happy to have them both for sure do you want to know what the storm might be over do you want to know how to set up your own tarp and not get wet in the rain do you want to know how to stay protected from black flies and bugs do you want to go crazy talking to yourself eight days deep in the bush anyways i'm happy with my progress i'm really uh i was taking it easy when i wanted to and i needed and when i needed to move i did and now i'm kind of evened out
Um, I think I might be even done in 12 days. Who knows? It all depends on how I feel and what the weather is and everything. I could definitely make it out in 12 now, or I can extend it. I could probably make it out in 10, to be honest with you, but I'm not going to do that. Um, anyway, still quite a ways to go. Still lots of things to see. I saw caribou today. I saw caribou for the first time in my life. Amazing. This is a cool spot, man. A really cool place, uh, northern Ontario. I'm, I'm doing the big three uh, parks this year. Wabakimi, Woodland Caribou, and Quetico. So, uh, doing the Northwest Challenge. I'm really happy about it, really excited about it. Lots of fishing, lots of canoeing, lots of bugs, lots of sun, lots of rain, lots of just exercise and feeling good and making memories. I'm going to try to go on the other trips with some some people not not solo but um, I needed to do this big one solo and the other ones won't be this long I don't think maybe a week maybe 10 days tops I'm gonna get out of here soon and uh, make some supper and check out the sky maybe we'll get a, a double rainbow if we're lucky and uh, yeah do you want to know what I mean for supper different day that setup worked amazing everything I have is dry under there I really like that tarp UGQ UGQ for the tarps and the quilts so I'm going to take advantage of this lull in the weather and try and get some uh, stuff split down because everything's going to be really wet now and then I can just cook underneath my tarp with the bush buddy. Shredded chicken, rice, vegetable meal with some seasoning salt, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to cold soak it because I don't really have good firewood or even I don't want to cook it in the uh, bush buddy for too long. So if you cold soak it it definitely cuts down on the actual cooking time. Doesn't that look good? I use filtered water when I cold soak because, I don't know, it's not gonna be boiled per se in there. It's probably fine. It's probably fine just to drink the water out of the lake to be honest up here. So I put just enough where it's floating normally and then I might have to add some more after but now we'll go get some wood, some twigs and stuff. I'm hoping the inside of this piece of wood is dry still. It was like deluge. It freaking came down by. Uh oh. I'm missing a piece on there. Yep. I am. Things are pretty dry. Split this little bits down. Ah. Oh, the mosquitoes. They are here. There we go. Well, that's going nicely. I used the petroleum jelly cotton ball trick and split wood. Take a look at what this looks like now. Nice. Before I throw it on, I'm going to add more water, obviously, or else it will burn and not rehydrate.
face the handles away from the flame. That way, you can pick it up. If I put it on this way, the handles will get hot. Bonus, bonus tips with Joe for your charge. It's raining again. Shout out the outside. Shout out the outside world. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I know it's not any better, but it's close enough. Ellis and Sheen's. Uh. Alright. Well, in I head with my water bottle, pee bottle, food, journal, book. Out of the rain. I think it's gonna be a long, long time. Yeah. And I think it's gonna be. I gotta do this quick because the bugs, they like to come in with me for some reason. I don't know why that would be. I'm, I don't, I'm not hospitable to them. I tell them to leave. I don't know. I don't know. Ah! Oh, my food's out there still in this camera. Oh man, I'm glad I got that all done. Wow. I'm eating food and reading my book, I guess. This tarp is so slick, how I said that. And I don't even have it set up right. Just threw it up. That stuff is hot. I gotta wait. It's sitting out there to cool. Well, the rain has stopped. I ate supper long ago. I've been reading, hanging out in here. It's time for me to go to bed. I've blown this sleeping pad up like 45 times already. So this is gonna be a long night, I'm sure. I kind of stuff some clothes underneath and I'm gonna use this extra one underneath and stuff, but Anyways, no big deal. Um, I have a decent day of portaging tomorrow. I'm hoping the weather's better. I haven't looked on the on the, on the inReach. I don't want to. Um, I did once before, and just because I needed to get out of the spot I was at. But anyways, uh, I'm hoping I'm hoping the whatever is here right now blows away, and tomorrow's a nice day, and I can air out my stuff. Um, on my lake for the day. The lake that I um, am planning on camping at is special and you will see why hopefully tomorrow if I make it there. Um, I might even spend two nights there I'm not sure I really don't know that's part of the part of the plan but I'm not sure. Uh, but I want to see if I can repair this mattress a little bit better so I'd like to have some space to air out all my stuff and hang up some stuff. It's kind of cramped here, and I was cramped yesterday at camp too, and rolled in there late. So, anyways, I'm gonna head to bed, and I will see you guys in the morning. Uh, tomorrow should be. I'm crossing my fingers that tomorrow is nice weather, but either way, it should be a good day. Good night. Oh my. Oh, and the wind is going with me. Look at that. The wind is going with me and everything. Okay. Okay. It's much colder last night. There's no bugs right now, which is amazing. I'm sure they're going to come out today, but I'm certainly going to take advantage of this time and cook up a good breakfast for myself because I have the biggest portaging day of the trip. So, uh, yeah, let's make some pancakes and, uh, and jerky. <laughs> There's frost on my backpack, no joke, wow. So uh, it, over here is super uneven where I had the, I, I had to put the tent there because there's no trees over here for the tarp. Anyways, at about four in the morning, I was tired of laying on the cold, lumpy ground, and I moved over there so I could lay on the cold, flat ground. My hips are uh, not happy with me this morning. Old man Joe.
Oh look, I won. How come that never works? The water just falls right back onto it. Man, that wind is no joke. It's pretty chilly. There's some weather coming in again. The clouds are changing. The sky's changing. There's some clouds. Which is not what I'm looking for. Big old pancake today, boys and girls. How good does that look, okay? How good does that look? Getting better at this pancake thing. It won't even flip because of the syrup. Get on there, boy. All right, let's eat this thing. Mmm. Mmm. That's a good Canadian pancake breakfast right there. Spatula and all. Well, there is some clouds, but it doesn't look too bad. And the little bit of wind there is, is going the way I want to go. So it's, I'm really happy for that. It's going to be a good day. Got some big portages. And we're going to end up on a special lake. I keep telling you about, you'll see. We're going to eat this up. Finish packing down camp and we'll get on the water. For as small as it was when I pulled up, thinking like, what the heck is this? Pretty good camp. All right, down the lake we go. Might even be in a river system right here. We are following a river, I'm just not sure if I'm in a lake or river right now. It all looks the same. Oh, that, that tailwind though. What do you know about that tailwind, Joe? Oh, that puts a smile on my face, man. I was going this same way yesterday and it was just torture, just the most brutal hard paddling going. And now it's like, just hold on and point her straight, bud. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I haven't seen a bug today at all yet either. Too, too chilly and too breezy. Too sea breezy. Got boot right in front, boot right in back. And hopefully, by the time we get to uh, where I have to put them on, they'll be a little bit dried out, a little bit warmer. But if not, me doing those portages are gonna warm my feet up anyway. Does this hat look silly? <laughs> There's camp. Looks like we got some more clouds coming in. Some dark ones too. And they are cruising by the looks of it. 
I wouldn't mind a sunny day. I wouldn't mind a sunny day. <laughs> Pretty boggy, pretty boggy over here. Sometimes the front of the boat gets stuck on a twig or something. Okay, sun's out, gun's out for now. Pretty tight in here and intimate. It's nice, I like it as a contrast to the big lakes. I like them both definitely and I like a mix of the two and rivers on, on the same trip and I've had all three. These tight little small pond like linear lakes. And those big, big, big lakes. White water and white clay and the river systems when it first came in. It was amazing. Tons of walleye. This area has been burned recently, well, maybe 20 years ago or so. You can tell from the young trees and then the old burn still sticking up. So I'm coming up to back-to-back 700-meter -back portages with a just a little hop, skip, and a jump in the middle. The first one says P700 wet. The second one says SOB floating bog P700. <laughs> I asked Bruce, does SOB stand what I think it stands for? He goes, yep. So I'm imagining this will be uh, an SOB floating bog that's about 700 meters. Looking for my portage somewhere on this shoreline. Pretty congested though. That little gap in the trees has to be it. There's nothing else. I'm sure lucky the wind changed and I'm not having to paddle against this. This is ridiculous. Check this out though, this is the, the trail. It's been all good portages up until now, at least to be able to find them. Do you see a trail at all? The only thing that told me that this is a trail or these broken branches. And that could easily have been a moose, but I'm sure it's not. Because as soon as you get into here, you can see there is a remnant of a trail. Starts to open up a little bit here. And an old blaze on the spruce. Yeah, I'm pretty confident this is it. Again, another broken branch. Yeah, okay. Much nicer in here away from the wind. All right, we're gonna start this 700. We're finally at the end of the first 700. It was pretty wet, like the map said. And we just have to get across this little pond and start another 700. And she started to rain on me again. Doesn't that blue look inviting? Oh man, rain stopped again. That's good. Whew. 
Only one more and then a thousand. Nothing. Cakewalk. Walk in the Wabakimi Park. The next one is the one that says SOB floating bog, but like this is a floating bog as they come. <laughs> Gotta go that way. Look at this view, 360. I'm just in this little puddle. If you didn't know, like this is, this is the whole world right here. <laughs> it's just this little puddle surrounded on all sides by the same exact growth. I don't know why that's such a big deal to me. It is though one cut tree that's how i can tell that this is the portage look nothing 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 one stump <laughs> pretty wet i don't know that it's any wetter than the other one Oh, okay. I just sunk deeper. <sighs> uh, come on. Uh, there we go. Oh my goodness. Getting there. Getting there. And there we are. I have a good, decent paddle in front of me. And then a thousand meter. I'm sweating. That was nothing, Bruce. That was nothing. Man, I am flying. I'm, I'm going faster than some sometimes when I'm paddling. I'm so glad I'm going with the wind. I'm, I would be windbound today, one million percent. I wouldn't be going anywhere. Woo! Cruising, bro! I am going faster than if I were paddling if there was no wind. That is crazy. Just flying down this lake. Decent sized waves. It's like I'm surfing on the top of them. There's one. Special lake, a lake that we're gonna camp at. And I don't know what I was thinking. That last portage was not a thousand meters. It was not even marked a thousand meters. It did not have a number on it. But it was definitely, at the very least, 13, 1500 meters. I am done portaging for the day. Thank God. And this is a beautiful lake already. Look at this rock. Look at these rocks with the lichen on it. Just gorgeous, man. Oh, look at this. Beauty. Um, what? <laughs> what? This is not on the map. So I just, what? I don't think I should just go down there.
I don't think I should run it. I don't know, man. Well, it's probably fine, right? It'll be fine. was a mess that was about as ungraceful about as ungraceful as possible right there oh i got lucky silly silly me i should have just ran it everything would have been better the rope wasn't long enough it got to the end when it needed to keep going and i it got to the end so it turned sideways anyways i can't believe i can't believe i can't grab a pipe out of here i don't think there's walleye here but surprised i can't grab a pipe i'll keep trying for a little bit look at this spot man this is really, really pretty. Like, one of the prettiest spots. This might be the prettiest spot of the trip for me. Why is the wind coming towards me now, though? <laughs> That's not how it was going. I might take a rest day at this camp tomorrow, and if that's the case, and if it's hot, I'm coming here to swim. A little cool little pool. Cool pool, Joe. It's a blue walleye, and I almost just lost my fishing rod. It's a blue walleye. I pulled up a blue walleye out of here. Oh my, this is insane. I'm so excited. Chris, I gotta show Chris. Look at, look at, look at, look at, look at. No joke, it's seriously blue. I wish I had my DSLR. Look at how blue it is. Oh my God, I gotta put it back in. This is special. Holy smokes. Oh man. A blue walleye. If I can, man, I don't even, should I even keep one to eat? That is crazy. I was fishing forever. Then I switched to this size little Cleo and that little guy hit on it. That walleye was blue, 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 blue. I hope that comes through in the GoPro. Holy smokes. This, I had no idea that this was in this lake. This lake is just more and more special. None of these things are the thing I was talking about either. Holy crap. Blue walleye. Blue walleye. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I've only ever, like, I know they exist, but I've never seen one in person. I've only ever heard of people being excited when they've caught them. That is crazy. No wonder I didn't pull any pike out of here. Blue walleye. Blue walleye. Okay, I hooked another one. I hope it's a blue one. Trying to be easy on them. They're special. Special. What's well, bigger? Oh my God, it's blue. It's blue. It's so blue. I've got to eat it for supper. It's so blue. How blue? I have to eat it for supper. It's the bluest thing I've ever seen in my life. And I need to get this on my DSLR. Dude, oh my. Oh my. He's blue Dabu Deba. This is, this is blue. This is blue. Okay, um, he's supper. Uh, I want to get my big camera out too. And we're going to head down the lake. This is too cool. This is probably my favorite lake I've ever been. Blue walleye.
Taken right out of there. Just an amazing spot. I haven't even gotten onto the lake proper yet and I am stoked. Just stoked about this. Listen, li listen to this. Blue walleye, caribou, moose, as many fish as I've wanted, epic campsites, thunderstorms, super hot days, burn, old growth, swimming, raining, wild bikini. Uh, this is my first time here and it has not disappointed. I'm sure I will be back and my trip is nowhere near done. Good times, good times. Even the cabins, like that's a whole other thing too. I'm freezing. I stayed there too long fishing. I don't have anything insulating on, just windbreaker stuff now, which is fine. But my feet are soaked. I got it to camp. Oh, this is a really cool lake. Have I said that? Crazy. I haven't seen any bears at all on this whole trip. Just caribou and moose, you know, no big deal. Like the entrance to the lake up there. Look at that. Freaking archways and everything. This place is special. lake I really am I'm pretty sure I want to stay here tomorrow too you know what um, if the Sun comes out today or tomorrow that would be just the icing on the cake like I'll go swimming I'll jump off some of these rocks boy howdy I am very cold I'm chilled through to the bone I'm starting to shiver a little bit I need to get to a camp um, if there's a camp I want to go down the lake, but I might just camp on this side of the lake and move, move camps tomorrow um, Down the lake, but it depends if this lake if this camp is not good here. I'm definitely keep, I'm, <clears throat> If this camp here is no good, I'm gonna keep moving on It's been a long day lots of portage my biggest portage day yet Like 5k? No, one and a half and one and a half, three, I don't know, almost four maybe. Anyways. And double carrying everything too. I think this is the camp around here. If this is the case, this is a pretty cool spot. I probably will camp here if, if it looks suitable once I get up there. Man, this is so pretty with all this exposed rock everywhere. Really, really not like the rest of the trip at all. Like, totally different. Uh oh, very shallow. Very shallow. So calm in here. I'm gonna even camp in here, I think. I still haven't found a site proper, but that doesn't matter either. I'll show you what I found and then uh, and then what I think I might do. And then I have an option. First off. Found the site. This is it. Nothing special. Um, 
in the wind, which isn't too bad, but I'm pretty cold. I don't want to get over the wind right now. I'm sure when it gets hot, I'll want it, but check this out. A little fish skull. A fork. Holy smokes, look at all the wood. I did not know that's what that was. I thought that was a fire pit. Anyways, I'm not too keen on this site. So there's something over here. So this spot here, I'm gonna put my tent there. Nice flat spot with some sphagnum moss or with some lichen to help make it softer with the crappy pad I have. I can hang my hammock here between those two. And I can have my fire right on that rock with a nice view. You can hear a bush plane. And as I'm saying that, the breeze has died down here, tucked in here. Sun's starting to come out a little bit and the black flies are pinging off my face. It's okay, I'm, I know I can't have everything. But there is uh, another site across the bay that I'm just so curious about. So I'm gonna go check that out too right now and then make my decision on where I will camp for tonight and then tomorrow I'll move down the lake and uh, show you the special thing I've been talking about. So very much. No go on that other site. It's no better and it's very exposed in the wind. Back we go. Sword in the stone here. I'm not, no, that's way too big to carry. No, it's not. No, it's not. We got it. I got my hammock up behind you, and I'm gonna sleep in that tonight. I gotta make up my fish, and I don't know what I'm gonna make with it. Maybe some soup, and maybe some mashed potatoes. I'm not too sure just yet. But we gotta get everything squared away first. Pretty nifty. All right, that's a little better. I cleaned up, I got it all squared away. That's just folded over for now. Everything's cleaned up and I have some batteries charging for my main camera. Let's see, if I sit here, I got that little, there's a like puddle of water in there, pretty safe. Make the fire right here, call it good. I don't need anything crazy. I might have messed my back up a touch today. Just a touch. Lots of portage. In. Did I mention that? Camp's coming together nicely. It's so nice being in a place where it's not overpopulated, not used up too much. There's just firewood everywhere. Firewood for days. Black flies for days too. I put nothing in there, I promise you. That was just the twigs I collected. I broke them in half. 
There's all the lichen on top of them, or on the outside of them. I'm sure that's what's going up right now, but holy smokes. Fire driven forest. Take that black flies. Sausages and beans for supper tonight. There's my dehydrated sausages are in here, sliced up. And they're with a little bit of water. And they're going to rehydrate, and then I've got somewhere. Got this organic bike baked beans and spicy rich tomato sauce, and that's in a pouch. No BPA, no BPA for me. So. These are gonna get warmed up in my pot. And then after those sausages are reconstituted, we add it to that and all heat it up together. Yummy. Rehydrating sausage. Doesn't that look good? Mmm. Don't be jealous now. Oh my. I'm not gonna be drinking that sausage water though. No hot dog flavor water for this guy. It is good, I promise. Gosh, <laughs> gosh. Super hot. It's just a hearty meal. It sticks to your ribs. Easy to make. Not easy to dehydrate. I'll do it with different sausage next time. Which is a nice campsite. The real one is just right there and it's not any better than this. This is all I need. It's just a spot between two trees to hang my hammock little flat spot for my stuff just to get organized, a rock to have a fire to sit on. And I was able to get out of the breeze here, is what, which I needed. I laid in my hammock for a while after I set it up and the sun came out for a good while and it warmed me right up, man. Like I, I needed, I was cold to my bones. Like I was in there freezing, even changed over my wet stuff. Sun came out, we got real hot in there. And I just laid in there basking like a freaking bearded dragon. Or leopard gecko. I guess I wouldn't be a bearded dragon. Probably be a newt. Like a newt. Although I don't think newt, I don't think newts bask. I think newts try to stay away from the sun. If I'm not mistaken. Talking about newts. Day nine. So for a nighttime paddle. Wow. Magic. Oh my goodness. Look at this. Look at this. The color of that lichen. Oranges they come. Wow. <laughs> this is actual magic right here. This is so cool. I'm just going to sit in here for a minute.
This is otherworldly. Crazy. Look at this view. Very special, very special place. I don't, there was no hint of rain. In the very second, the very second I showed you them this tiny drizzle start. It's blue above me. It's not blue over there, but right above me, it is blue. Heavy. That's not even all of them. I'll show you guys more tomorrow. I'm gonna go see if I can catch a fish or two. Here, a bush plane. Hear them every now and then out here. Anyways, that's what was special about this lake. I know I told you you'd have to wait till tomorrow, but I never stick to what I say anyways.
Um, yeah, it was one of the highlights of the trip for me. I had no idea that this lake was going to be so awesome other than that. Like, that's the, uh, that was the reason. Just the rest of it is the icing on the cake. I'm not warm. Anyways, I'm gonna stop now and be silent for a little bit and just think about what would have been and why. Just imagine that their lives were just like, like sounds silly to say, but just as real as you, yours and mine, real out here doing this everyday living. Like families probably buddies there telling stories together challenging each other to climb up the cliff and doing whatever else it's just cool for me to think of while well, I'm out here in the same exact water right here I was right there <laughs> no way! <laughs> That's amazing. First cast into this epic looking freaking spot. I thought it was a snag and it is a fish. Holy smokes. Decent pike. You can just get off if you want. I don't need to handle you. Oh. Go. Alright, we'll catch you in a minute. By far the best lake I've ever been on. My favorite lake ever. Crazy. What a gem. I'm so happy. I'm so happy I came this way. It was worth it. All that portaging, all the big paddling on the big water was worth it. This night couldn't get any better. Oh, wait, there's a double rainbow. <laughs> Thank you. Holy smokes. Are you kidding me? Just for Joe? Just for Joe! Oh man. Double Rainbow Joe, what does it mean? What does it mean? Full arch, what? Full arch! Oh, I'm beside myself, are you kidding me? What does that happen? Full arch. What does it mean? What does it mean? Oh, it's gone over there now. I caught it though. I caught it. This is magical. Honestly, man. This is wild. Blue walleye, pictographs, random pike from a little rock cut stream coming in, amazing campsite, cliffs everywhere, rainbow, double rainbow. First cast. Blue walleye.
like 10 o'clock. I'm heading back now. Absolutely amazing spot. Well, super happy I went out tonight. Wouldn't have experienced most of those things if I didn't. So, pictographs, blue walleye, double rainbow. Amazing scenery. I'm gonna head to bed. I'm not bringing that camera in the hammock with me. So, I'll get with you guys in the morning and I'll let you know how it went. I hope I get a good sleep. I'm just worried about my back being flat. I feel like I need to lay straight to counteract the paddling and hunching and carrying over the portages all day. But I'm sure I'll sleep like a baby. All right, folks. Another great day in Wabakimi. Another great night in Wabakimi. Only had a few more left.